Hey guys, welcome. It is your September Love Tarot Monthly Energy Update. This is good for all signs. So what I'm going to do is a little review of the month, um, astrologically speaking, and then I will take the month in tarot week by week, week one, two, three, and four, for your person, for you, and for your connection. So if you have someone in mind, this is the right kind of reading. Um, we kick off the month with, and I'm looking at some notes just so you know, we kick off the month with the new moon in Virgo. That's going to happen on the 2nd here on the East Coast um, of the States, around about 10 p.m. Eastern time. So it'll be on the 3rd for Across the Pond and other points around the globe. Um, we then have, and that's... Um, you know, we just came through kind of a bumpy lunar cycle. So this is very welcome because it's in a sign of healing. Um, and it hearkens a month of healing ahead, right? So that's good. But you're going to want to fasten your seatbelts because it's also the beginning of eclipse season. When we hit the full moon in Pisces on the 17th, it's a partial um, eclipse at that time. So rest up now because the middle of the month things may shift a bit on september 4th uh, we have mars moving into cancer um, and it's about you know mars is our goals our it's our embodied action so decisions goals projects things we want to get into action um, we're seeing it through the lens of Cancerian energy, which is a sign of protection and care and nurturing. Mars isn't really super comfy there, right? Kind of gets a little antsy. So sometimes some anger can flare, a little passive aggressive energy. So you're going to want to focus on some self-care um, if you find your, you know, temper rising or if you see that in others. Uh, we also have Mercury moving into Virgo, um, you know, completing the final pass of retrograde. So he's direct now. That's good. Direct in Leo, but then moving back, back into Virgo where he began his retrograde, um, I think on September 8th, and then completes the whole retrograde cycle on the 10th or 11th. Um, and wraps up that direct sh shadow. So then we'll have two full months where Mercury is in his free and clear. Yay! Um, and then right after that, we have the Pisces full moon on the 17th, which um, we have the beginning of eclipse season there. So uh, the full moon will be conjunct um, Neptune, and that's all happening in the sign of Pisces. And all that water, watery energy and that thrust is going to, you know, obviously generate a lot of emotional stuff as we get popped through the wormhole passage. That's part of eclipse energy. And so fast moving, transformative consciousness between that full moon and the next eclipse on October 2nd. So expect things to be intense and especially amplified for a couple of weeks in the realm of emotions. It's water energy, Pisces is. So um, right after that on the 22nd, we have the autumnal uh, equinox. That's, you know, very Libran in energy. That's, that's when we move into the uh, Libra mansion. And one of the markers of that shift in the north, uh, it's autumn in the southern hemisphere, it's spring. So days and nights are of equal length at that time, giving us a little breather and a reset. And we're moving toward the dark here in the north of winter and the turning of the year um, towards summer in the south. So, right, those are just markers, right? They're not really astrological, they're just um, how we as humans evolved um, before such things as um, calendars and such and watches and such, right? How we became an agrarian world and society. So those are great markers and uh, how we kind of reset ourselves. I, I just love those um, shifts. 
Uh, after that, also on the 22nd, actually, we have Venus moving into Scorpio. Venus in Scorpio, yeah, one of her least favorite signs, and it um, is not where she's really happy. Just after she spends time in Libra, which is one of the signs she rules, where she's really happy, she kind of has to do duty in uh, the sign of Scorpio, where she's in what's referred to as her detriment, where she's not happy, because that sign opposes Scorpio, opposes Taurus, which is one of her ruling signs. And so that whole week or three week, three and a half weeks is going to be a little rough and bumpy too, right? That third week. Um, and the next three and a half weeks after that will be a little uncomfortable in matters of the heart because that's just Venus just isn't comfortable there. Um, so stingers will be out. Think of Scorpio stingers, stinging, stinging tails. And then um, we have finally at the close of the month, Mercury moves into Libra. Uh, we finish the month there with Mercury changing signs at the 26th. Um, and once again, we've got harmonious communication, things kind of level out and we get a little bit more heart centered and peaceful. So I bring you mostly, you know, our personal planets, So you kind of get a feel for what's going on, but I also like to let you know where the highs and lows may be felt and where the bumps along the way, um, may be experienced. Okay. So that's it in a nutshell. A lot easier, breezier than August. Okay, here we go. Or that was August. September looks decidedly more normal. Here we go. I'm going to pull the overall energy for the month and then I'll walk you through the rest of the spread. Strength card. Yes. So <laughs> this is now about getting up and over the obstacles that we've just come through. Almost like uh, sort of getting an assist, um, gathering up our strength, our courage, and our confidence to move on. It's like soldiering on after everything we've just come through. Yes, here's week two to week three, and then, wow, oh my goodness. So for your person, um, week one, we've got this Ace of Wands. This is the month of September, Ace of Wands to your Page of Wands and the connection, uh, the Seven of Wands. It does feel like there's uh, some feeling of renewal here. It's optimistic, it's passionate, um, but your energy here in the middle is almost like you're trying to keep things light. Um, and so there might be some resistance and a little bit of keeping things at arm's length as your person may come on a little strong here. And it's almost like there's a recovery aspect to the strength card for you in week one here of the month of September. For your person in week two, we've got the death card moving from week one to week two. Death card for them, lover's card for you and the Six of Pentacles in the connection. And what I like about this is the death card is not just about endings, but it's about releasing, you know, releasing things that are getting in the way of growth, change, and transformation. This is Scorpio energy because it's eighth house themes of death and rebirth. And so if you're coming in with the lover's card, which is a card of choice, it is about, you know, the free will and the construct here for the connection is about mutual investment. Um, and about the give and take of it all, which was the theme of the full moon in Aquarius reading I did two weeks ago. So this new moon may ask you to kind of reset. Where are we from then till now? And it may be a time where this person has to reassess what part, you know, are they playing in this connection? What might they need to leave behind so that they can kind of be born anew in this connection where they invest in it more of their own free will and instead of feeling like they're being browbeaten into it on some level, if that makes sense. Then moving from week two into week three, eight of swords, maybe they get caught up in their head a bit a little bit of overthinking while you here in the 10 of pentacles 
are more focused on the future, on life partnership, and the connection may hit a little bit of a, um, uh, a roadblock. The Two of Pentacles coming through with that decision making. What are we really dealing with here? Your person gets a little stuck, you're projecting into the future. And so decisions, decisions, or indecisions, as it were. Um, and then in week four, as I said, we're closing out here. Five of Pentacles for your person, nine of cups for you. Queen of Wands, somebody's got to take the bull by the horns and figure out what are we doing here? So I'm, I'm seeing the Queen of Wands more an energy of, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be one of, of you over the other, but just a, it's a leadership card. It's a card of, I got this. Um, and I'm not gonna let, I'm, I'm not gonna let something slip through the cracks. She's just a natural born leader. She's got passion. She's got a little magical quality to her. So it could be one of you. I'll know more when I get to the clarifiers, but I'm seeing here where something may get lost in translation. Nine of cups can be a little bit of unrealized wish fulfillment. So by virtue of something that isn't quite being resolved and we have the five of pentacles for your person, they may be getting lost in their overthinking and over analyzing and, you know, second guessing And with the five of pentacles, they may start to find themselves unworthy or not able, right? Maybe they don't think that they have what it, what they need to have to offer you, right? They can't offer you the future that you desire or deserve. That may be a roadblock that we hit. Okay, and so that looks like the month of September that's coming through. So let's see where this takes us now. Strength card. Wow. Beautiful. Ace of Cups, the Star, and the Empress. So I'm feeling a lot of powerful energy from this Ace of Cups and this star, um, dreams coming true, wishes being granted, the miracle that is this gift of the love of a lifetime. Um, maybe your one true love and the beautiful energy of the Empress underneath. So for those of you who are brand new, hello, welcome. Please come say hi in the comments and let me know where you're tuning in from. That's always fascinating to me. But when I'm pulling from the bottom of the deck, I'm tapping into unconscious awareness or something playing out behind the scenes. So I'm feeling the supportive energy here from divine feminine um, energy coming through. So there is this, and now that may give me a little bit more of a clue about the queen of wands. There is something more supportive coming through from the divine feminine in this reading as a source of strength and support. Because in the strength card, these two help each other. There's an aspect of this card that is not just about overcoming obstacles, but that it doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's sort of this connectedness um, energetically. So how lovely is that? That the love kind of prevails, that the help is available even if it's just at 5D as an energetic construct. Ace of Wands for your person to the Death card. And remember, this can always come through reverse. Take it as it speaks to you. It's a general, not a private. Um, death card again. And there's the Six of Pentacles. I almost feel like, <laughs> I almost feel like, yeah, this person takes your energy of the page of wands almost like you kind of rebuff their advance a little bit or maybe you're in your effort to kind of keep things simple they may take it very much like some form of rejection yeah they may take it as some form of rejection right off the bat that may, may be a miscue let me see for you the page of wands to the lovers before i go any further Six of Swords, Nine of Pentacles in the Sun. So there's something that hit, we're bringing forward from August that you're kind of wanting to get beyond. Six of Swords, peace, peace of mind, some calmer waters. So you're not wanting to dive too deep 
here in this first month of September. Nine of Pentacles, the Virgo energy. We are in Virgo season, kind of pulling back, maybe more focused on yourself. And the sun is lovely and you want this, this happiness. You kind of want to get back on good terms. And your focus though is on something a little bit more deeper than just the chemistry. That's what I'm getting. And it's very possible that this person may, may not get the memo. They may take um, your reaction or your response to them somehow as a form of rejection. So now that you know that, keep that in mind. So now I want to see for them, um, week three to week four is where we really get into a sticky situation for this person. Magician, King of Swords, Six of Cups. This person is, let, it's almost like the magician reversed. They're not gonna tell you, but they're gonna feel very ineffectual, um, like no sense of mastery. And the King of Swords grows a little cool, a little distant, a little aloof, doesn't say a whole lot. Six of cups there underneath. It's almost like they feel you're slipping away from them. Someone that they feel so comfortable with, that they feel a sense like you're home to them, right? And so now in this moment where they're kind of struggling with, well, I don't understand why all of a sudden this person is just kind of keeping it on this superficial level. Well, you have a rhyme or reason to that, but they may not understand it. And so they may interpret the cues on their own and they may not interpret them correctly. Okay. And what that does is it sets them on a little bit of a, um, I'm not going to call it self-destructive, but it's definitely a self-defeating path. One where they start to question their own worth and value that they, you know, they certainly can't, um, you know, they can't provide for you. They don't have enough to offer you because I'm looking at you next with the week three to week four, where you're really thinking about the future and the, what you've always wished for. And so there's some question here if maybe there's a disconnect. Okay, so let me look at that. Actually, for you, I'm going to start with, um, I may go across the board for you, lovers to the 10 of pentacles. There's our two of pentacles. What am I really dealing with here? Judgment, king of pentacles. So your question is about um, some form of second chances here. If there's a need for forgiveness, redemption with judgment, king of pentacles, ten of pentacles. And the lover's card is, you know, is this person really on board for this connection? for the long haul, are they the kind that I could build a life with? I'm not sure. So that's why you're coming into the month with this page of Wands Outlook, right? Almost like I just wanna to get to calmer waters. I'm, I'm not going to overdo on this connection. And unfortunately, this person takes that cue as some form of rejection. In the meantime, you're really in like looking at the situation in real time, trying to dis to discern, which is a word for Virgo and a word for, we're in Virgo season and for the month of September is discernment. You know, is this someone that really um, I could count on? Is potential life partner material? Um, the judgment card, second chances, reunion, reconciliation, redemption, forgiveness. And so that's what you're processing. But by the time we get to week three, this person is already in their head determining that they don't have enough to offer you and that they're not very masterful. Um, and King of Swords, they start to close down. Um, so, Ten of Pentacles for you to the Nine of Cups.
you're with three of wands. Wow, queen of cups, two of cups. I'm going to get an extra card for you on this nine of cups. Right. So all along now, what's happening is you're evaluating, you're anticipating three of wands, what's coming toward me here. My heart is open, queen of cups. Remember, you're coming in with empress energy, divine feminine, open and receptive to this connection, two of cups, the soulmate. And then something here, and I even thought maybe some lack of wish fulfillment, and you're sizing up this person as complacent. And you're not sure what's happening. What am I dealing with? It was, what's going on with this person? And it starts to feel dark. And what I'm here to tell you is it's just fear. It's fear and insecurity because you're 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 missing a you're missing a cue you're missing a cue <clears throat> right here in the beginning of the month so um what i'm trying to help you see is that while you're kind of sort of holding this person off a bit um, and trying to keep things a little casual and loose while you're trying to assess what's really going on in the situation by the time we get to the end of the month then you're perceiving them as not invested and maybe too complacent, but they have really talked themselves out of their ability to provide for you, to, that they're even worthy of you, and you're reading that as they're not, they're not someone who is ready to be in a serious relationship. See how that happens? And because we have personal planets changing signs, uh, we have some other major planetary activity with Uranus, uh, with Pluto specifically. And so they're there too. I don't bring them up because they tend not, I mean, they tend to impact us all as a collective. But, you know, we can feel their vibration as well. So I'm just trying to say, um, pay attention in the beginning of the month specifically um to sensitivities toward uh, what you're communicating you know is your p person picking up what you're laying down or are they interpreting it in a different way so that by the time you get to the end of the month um and you're going like what's happening here or why is nothing happening here because what you think it may be about is not is potentially not what it's about okay here we go. I want to look at the connection. I understand you trying to hold this person off. And here's where I feel things start to break down, though. Um, I'm going to go right here. Let's see this. Seven of Wands to the Six of Pentacles, because I feel like you get a little bit it's not like you're defensive. I'm not feeling any of that. I feel it's a little more resistant. I feel like you're kind of like, you're kind of holding off this ace of wands. You're holding off on the full bore passion of it all. You're kind of like, like, you know, a little bit less intense, a little more independent, a little less. There's something here that there's a differential and this person reads it differently. Seven of Wands to the Six of Pentacles. Wheel of Fortune, Lovers, Seven of Wands. I'm so glad I did this because they have the Six of Pentacles in their unconscious awareness. You, we, we have the Lovers in your row for the second week, but it shows up here. So you can start to feel how your respective energies are pushing the connection. Right, the Wheel of Fortune is a timing card. Is it is the time right? Divine time. So you're holding things off. This is you saying, "Yeah, not so fast. I'm not sure the time is right." Right? I want this to be chosen of our free will. I, I, this is a powerful connection. So there's the resistance, conscious awareness, unconscious awareness. I want this to be mutually invested. I want them to be generous as I am with them. I want them to be with me. It's got to be their mutual choice. Well, that is a perfect um, um, intention. 
and we're in new moon season, right? As I record this. So that's a really good intention when the time is right, right? We're supposed to choose each other of our own free will and be mutually invested in this connection for the long haul. I get it. I see it. I feel it. Well, then we go from week two to week three. And this is where the two of pentacles comes in. Oh, okay. There may be some kind of clarifying communication. Um, that may fee come, come off as a little heavy. Uh, Knight of Swords, Ten of Wands, King of Wands underneath, Two of Pentacles. Because it feels to me now like that King of Wands is coming through reversed. And the conversation could be a little something like, well, you know, it just seems uh, like, you know, maybe you're only available when it's convenient for you or when, right, like you're getting your needs met in this situation. So this Knight of Swords is, in this deck, the Knight of Swords is standing in front of that tower. Yeah. And I know it looks kind of gory, but I'm seeing a blood-tinged sword there. So it's one of those decks where the King of Swords is getting at the truth by any means necessary. Um, and that comes at a heavy price uh, when we're talking about the Six of Pentacles, which is supposed to be about generosity and reciprocity, about equal give and take. And it may just all be all too much with this King of Wands. And then we've got the Two of Pentacles. Well... I don't know. Now I'm torn. Now I'm on the fence. Now I'm not really sure what I'm dealing with here. And so, and that's for both of you because I'm reading about the connection. So it's almost like you both go into this third week where you're kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what, what we're dealing with. Week three to week four, two of pentacles to the king, to the queen of wands. Strength card. Eight of Cups, Nine of Cups, and let's see, an extra card on the Queen. The World. Perfect. So what's happening is we've got to sort of go back to the beginning, home base, uh, where it's about supporting each other energetically at the very least to help each other overcome this indecision. Um, Right. It's not it's not just about packing it in, you know, throwing in our chips and walking away. Um, it isn't about just resting on our laurels. Wish fulfillment doesn't come because we cross our eyes and, you know, cross our arms and blink our eyes. It's not magic. It's takes some effort. And the nine of cups here, the complacency that you may be feeling coming from this person is not is not what's happening. What's happening is some fear. Um, what's happening is, you know, some egoic resistance and coming from fear that they may not be able to measure up. Um, and so you have to explore that a little further. The Queen of Wands gets that energy. She's associated with a sign of Aries. She's cardinal energy, startup energy. She's going to kind of lean in to say, okay, what do we need to do next? And that is beautiful because Saturn is the reset. Saturn is the great teacher, the Lord of Karma, the planet of, you know, uh, that says, well, I want to give you a pat on the back for a job well done. Uh, well, I want to close out this difficult cycle and give you a new cycle to begin anew so you don't have to learn that lesson again. So it feels like we can kind of close out this difficult cycle Provided a lesson is learned, provided we get some closure for something, maybe a misunderstanding, Knight of Swords can be that clean up on aisle five kind of, of a card. Um, but you have to be open to hearing. You have to be open to coming to the, coming to the table and listening. Um, so I, I do feel like I'm seeing some hope here. Um, provided that you come through this month of September with an open heart, the Empress is the highest and best of all four queens, or, sh or, or not, right? Okay, so um, I kind of 
feel like I'm holding all the energy here for an em for an empress for divine feminine energy um, and it's not that that means it's all your work to do but I can certainly see how this whoever it is that you're dealing with um, misunderstands misunderstands an intention that you're holding actually for the higher good and and sort of it sort of unravels for them um but it can very easily get back on track in a new and better way as we close out the month don't forget we have eclipse season in here <laughs> right around week two to week three okay the 17th of the month um so things are bound to get a little wonky um, and it is happening in the sign of Pisces, which is all that watery energy. So be, be open to misunderstandings, be open to releasing some things that need to be released and then resetting um, so that you can end the month in a way that is far more healing than where you began. Okay, that's what I have for you make it a good month i will be also doing the new moon in uh, in virgo reading for you so check out that should be coming tomorrow much love bye for now oh wait before i go i'm doing the extended for this and i'm taking it sign by sign so the link to that is below it's only one link if you already have a membership of any kind for any of the individual zodiacs or for the all access pass you already have that, but if you are not a member, um, you can still grab that. That's below, and I'm going to take it individual zodiac sign by individual zodiac sign for a little bit of uh, individual attention for the month. Whew, almost forgot. Thanks. Bye for now. This, the links are below. Bye.